it's a little bit later and uh, Juliana is up from her nap. Look at her crazy hair. Oh my goodness. Hi, baby. Look at this mess. This is the situation. Hold on. You got a good view. This is what she does to entertain herself. She pulls everything out of her little diaper caddy here and just destroys everything on the coffee table. <laughs> Hi, baby. Hi. Hi. Do you think you're funny? Do you think you're funny? <laughs> she still has a little hairband, and you can see it. <laughs> you just can't see it. It's drowning in all of her hair, all your curls. Juliana is napping. She just went down not too long ago and I am praying that she stays asleep for at least an hour, but I am not, I'm not that optimistic about it. My son just walked in here asking me if he could take a shower and it's the middle of a school day. And I said, you're in school, aren't you in school? Like, and he said, yeah, but I have a 20 minute break. So I said, uh, no. I always start the vlogs off with, did I say blog or vlog? Vlogs off with me saying I look crazy, but I do because I'm always tired and I don't get dressed. <laughs> like I'm not in my pajamas right now. Like from the waist up, it looks like I'm dressed, but this is actually a long pajama shirt. While Juliana is napping, I want to talk about her sleeping issues because there have been a lot of sleeping issues since we got back from the camping trip. Not that there weren't before we went, but, and she's moving around. I don't even know if she ever actually fell asleep. I think she's still trying to like get comfortable. Today is actually her nine months, um, she's nine months today. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a nine month update later on in the video, but I wanna start off just talking about her sleeping challenges. When she was born, um, she was, she had a lot of issues with reflux, uh, gas. She had, um, intolerance to the protein in cow's milk. I tried to breastfeed her, didn't really work out. Um, pumped for a little while, but was also supplementing with formula. After a while, we realized that she had an intolerance to it and we had to switch her to a different formula that her stomach could handle better. So pretty much from the get-go, she was just really uncomfortable. Not unhealthy, she was very healthy, just these annoying little nagging um, things that made her very uncomfortable and she didn't sleep well. She never had any like really good stretches, hardly ever. Um, like. I want to say she was waking up every hour to two hours. Basically, it was just more than what is normal. Once we switched her formula, it got, she was slightly more comfortable. Um, that helped a little bit because she wasn't as gassy. She wasn't uh, spitting up as much. It wasn't, it was everything slightly got alleviated for her and which made it a little bit better. I feel like it looks like I don't have hair because my hair is like blending into <laughs> the headboard. So she got a little bit more comfortable, but her sleep was still crap. Naps were never consistent. You can never put her down and she would sleep a predictable amount of time. It would literally be, you put her down for a nap, you walk out of the room, she could sleep for an hour, she could sleep for 30 minutes. She could wake up every five or 10 minutes and you'd have to go in and settle her down. Couldn't shower, I could barely eat. I didn't have time to do anything. Those were not fun times <laughs> because it wasn't just, okay, swaddle, feed, lay down. Because she had the reflux issues, she couldn't lie flat. So it was figuring out <clears throat> how to safely prop her up. And so that if she did spit up, she wouldn't choke on it. It was literally like, okay, I have to prop her up this and let's do the swaddle and feed her and pacifier and you know, okay, maybe this surface is too hard. Okay, maybe this surface is too soft. It was literally trying a million and one things to try to figure out how to get this girl to sleep. And it was never the same thing every time. And I remember um, the nights just felt so long, so long because 
you're up all night. And I remember she would be down and just, I remember having this feeling of dread in the pit of my stomach, just like knowing the long night that was gonna be ahead of us <laughs> because I knew she wasn't gonna sleep and that it just, the nights just felt so long and to the point where I just couldn't wait for morning to come <laughs> because you're trapped in this room. You know, she was sleeping in our room in, the, in a bassinet and you're just trapped, like just being tortured with sleep deprivation all night. We were planning on finally starting to transition her to her room, but we were gonna wait till she was closer to six months because uh, that's what they always recommend for some reason. As we were approaching that six month mark, her sleep was getting even worse. During the middle of the night, she was up, literally starting to become every hour, every half hour. It was getting really bad. And finally, um, you know, her nursery had been set up since before she was born. All I did was order a new mattress that I thought would be more um, comfortable. Part of the reason why her nap was gradually getting even worse is because she was getting too big for the bassinet and she wanted to move around and be able to stretch out like she does now, but she couldn't. So I think she was just ready to have a bigger space. I don't know, it was probably like a week or so before she turned six months and her mattress came in and it was ready to go and I wanted to just test it out. Um, during one of her naps to see how she did. And she slept good. She was, you know, still wasn't, <laughs> I wouldn't say a good sleeper, but she was sleeping a lot better than she was in the bassinet because she was just likes to sleep all crazy kind of ways as she's moving. And she's nine months now. So for the last three months, it has been a lot of ups and downs. It's just so frustrating because you never know what causes the sleep regressions, right? They say, oh, they're teething or they're going through a developmental leap. I have the Wonder Weeks app and it, you know, it tells me when she's supposed to go through these uh, leaps, which can cause sleep regressions. Doesn't seem to be any relief from any of it because it's like, okay, I look at the chart and she's not going through a leap or she is going through a leap, comes off of the leap and there's still no improvement. And so it's like, I can't tell when she's going through a leap or when she's not because to me, it all seems the same. Um, I don't think she's teething right now because she already has her two bottom teeth in that broke through. I can't feel anything else coming through. Um, it, you know, there's really no other signs that show me that she's actively teething right now. So I don't know what the issue is. When we moved her into her crib, she would wake up on average about three times a night. Still excessive. I would say anything more than two is excessive for me, but you know, at least it was predictable. At least I knew every three hours or so she would wake up. Right before we went on the cabin trip, uh, she miraculously for like three or four days straight was sleeping really well for some reason. Like I said, on average, she, w she would wake up before that from the time that she started sleeping in her crib exclusively to now three times a night was, was average. But now it is just, since we've gotten back from the cabin trip, it's been pretty bad. I don't see why sleeping two nights in a pack and play in a cabin would make it this bad. But regardless of the reason, it's gotten bad. We are back to four or five times a night waking up, which is too much. It is three times is too much, but four or five times is way too much. If I'm going to bed at 10.30, she's like basically about to have her first wake up. So when I'm trying to go to sleep, she's just waking up. And then she will wake up every two to three hours after that until she wakes up at seven in the morning. When we transfer her to her crib officially, we did do some light sleep training. We went with, I know there's different ways to do it. Some people choose not to do it at all, but I, was at a point where it was either we sleep train her or I was going to lose my mind. And I chose my mental health over, you know, guilt I would have about her crying or being upset. So I decided that I was going to try and I spoke to Vince about it and we agreed that we did some research and watched some videos and we did 
uh, like an altered version of the Ferber method. So from my understanding, um, that's used to be called the cry dot method, which was you put your baby in the room, you walk out, if they cry, like you make sure they're dry and fed. And then if they cry, they cry and you let them cry until, you know, hopefully they fall asleep. I knew that wasn't going to work for me. Um, I don't think that works for most people, but, um, we did just like a gentle version of that. So put her down, um, you know, we do the whole, her whole routine, change her, rock her, um, feed her, put her down, walk out. We have a camera in there so we can watch her the whole time. They start crying. You wait. I think it's like three minutes. Um, if they still can't settle themselves down, which sometimes they do, but if they can't, you go back in, you, um, avoid picking them up, but you just try to settle them, put their pacifier back in their mouth if they need it, just make them feel comforted and then leave the room again. Um, and then you do that in intervals. Usually I think it depends. You can go up, they say up to like 20 minutes. Um, cause you do certain intervals, day one, day two, day three, whatever. It gets longer and longer. I chose to not go past 10 minutes, like at all. I never really had to, honestly, because she actually, um, was able to put herself back to sleep. And it usually just had to do with her getting her pacifier back in her mouth. It's just a soothing thing for her. And that's usually what it was is that she, it would fall out and she needed it. And it took her a while to find it and put it back in. She did really well. And I noticed that that definitely made it so that she had longer stretches of sleep. She was waking up less and I could predict it. It was like two times a night or something. And I could deal with that. You know, I can deal with twice a night, <laughs> you know, as long as I'm getting good stretches of sleep in between, I don't mind it. It's three months later, give or take. It's just gone completely reversed, even with naps. Her naps are super short. They were getting really long for, they were getting good for a while. Like her naps were always a struggle before. Couldn't get her to nap more than like, you know, <laughs> 30 minutes tops. Finally got to a point where she would take some naps for 30 minutes, some were an hour, some were an hour and a half. She even took two hour naps at times. It was, you know, not, perfect but it was it was doable everything is just happening at the same time with her sleep regression uh you know the clinginess and short naps everything so yeah it's a bit of a struggle and i don't know if we have to try to re-implement some sleep training again i don't know if that would even help i was weaning her off of night feedings for a long time she was doing better now she's back to wanting to eat almost every single time she wakes up. Obviously, I don't want to let her starve, but at the same time, it's like, why is she needing to eat all night when she eats during the day? You know, even if she ate once or twice a, a night, like I said, I could deal with that, but not four times. That's ridiculous. I'm going to have to do some type of sleep training again, start it all over again but I feel like it's not going to be as easy this time because she's older, she can stand up, uh, she pulls herself up, she's always messing with the wire that's attached to the camera, she's just more distracted, so it's not as easy this time, and she's just more aware, so that makes it more tough. I'm not getting any sleep. For an adult to be getting <laughs> maybe four hours of sleep every day for long periods of time is not healthy for anybody, and definitely not for me because like I've said before in um, other videos, I don't do well with sleep deprivation at all. I just don't know. If anybody, if anybody who has any experience with this has any idea of what's a good thing to do, please let me know because I have run out of ideas. Um, I'm going to wait for her to wake up here and then um, I don't even know how long she's been napping. Oh, and I will catch up with you guys in a little bit. So it's a little bit later and uh, Juliana is up from her nap. Look at her crazy hair. Oh my goodness. Hi, baby. Look at this mess. This is the situation. Hold on. <laughs> you got a good view. This is what she does. She pulls everything out of her little diaper caddy here and just destroys everything on the coffee table. <laughs> Hi, baby. Hi. Hi. Do you think you're funny? Do you think you're funny? <laughs> she still has a little hairband and you can see it. <laughs> you just can't.
can't see it. it's drowning in all of her hair all your curls so i was gonna take her nine month pictures today but i don't think that's gonna happen in fact i know it's not gonna happen <laughs> i'm gonna do it tomorrow because it's gonna be a little bit nicer weather wise it is really dreary and rainy. It's been raining all day. Th no, that can't be the real time. Is it the real time? It's already three o'clock. <laughs> oh my God. Where does the time go? Uh, it's already three o'clock and it's been raining hard since we woke up, although it's just drizzling now, but it's going to be raining all day. So I am exhausted. I didn't sleep last night and I don't feel like trying to get her pictures done because there's really no good lighting in here. <laughs> face. Look at this face. Um, yeah, basically it's just not the right time. I can do it tomorrow. It's not going to matter. Plus I just feel really blah. Like I'm not even dressed yet. <laughs> but I do want to give a quick nine month update. As you can see, she is standing up a lot. This is what she likes to do. She likes to pull herself up on everything. All I felt was wetness and she's licking my knee. So put everything in her mouth, including her mommy's knee. Um, she's very clingy now. She's gotten extremely clingy. She never wants to be put down. She never wants me to walk away from her. Um, <laughs> she doesn't want to be put in her pack and play anymore. I used to be able to just put her in there and she would play for a few minutes while I got some stuff done. She doesn't want to be in there anymore. She has her two bottom teeth in now. Let me see if you can see. <gasps> can you smile? You can see them a little bit there. <laughs> she doesn't like to show them. She's crawling everywhere. She used to do the little army crawl, but now she's crawling properly. She's eating my phone case. She's crawling properly. Um, so she just crawls everywhere. We had to finally, we didn't have the gate up for a long time, but then we realized we need it. Vince installed it. And yeah, it's a good thing because she's constantly over there playing by the stairs. Eating is a little different she used to like to eat finger foods um just you know i used to give her sweet potatoes and stuff like that i started noticing that she wasn't wanting to eat uh she was more willing to eat purees but still was hesitant to to do it i don't know what that was about so i decided to make it a little bit more fun and i started putting her food not purees but her finger foods in a bowl in her little bowls which she seems to enjoy a lot more. She has about two to three meals a day. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to get her to try more things, um, be less hesitant to eat and make it more fun for her. It's pretty much, um, I think that's pretty much everything for her nine months. <laughs> I think this is where I'm gonna end the vlog. I'm gonna clean this up, think about getting lunch. Is it really three o'clock? Like, like, how is it three o'clock already? <laughs> Yeah, so I guess I should eat lunch, and she should too. So we're going to end it here. Thanks for listening to me ramble on, but if you guys enjoy this content, you can like it and subscribe and follow along with us. She's going to drop the candle, and we will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.